Hi, I'm Cynthia, the Curly Baby Boomer. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you're coming back, I thank you very much. I started this channel because there really was no place for curlies of our age and generation. The song, When I'm 64, just keeps going through my head. I can't repeat the lyrics and I can't sing the song. You wouldn't want to hear me sing anyway. But what does that really mean? I'm not middle age anymore. Does that make me elderly? Ooh. This is going to be the most upfront video that I've ever done because I'm going to share with you my feelings about getting older and my feelings about having curly hair in general. It's going to be very honest. So if you want to hear my honest feelings, stay with me. And if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell to be notified when I post new videos. Accepting my curly hair. Well, I have to tell you that this is a time in my life where I really do like my hair more than I ever have before. Maybe it's a function of the cut, maybe it's a function of the products that I use. Some days I even love my hair, not every day, but more days than I ever have before. It's not perfect. Um, my stylist calls it perfect magazine curls. And I have to stop expecting perfect hair. Maybe that's a function of age, but I have accepted the fact that I'm gonna wake up and it's not gonna look the same every day and it's certainly not going to look perfect every day. But I'm okay with that. Perfection is not my goal. But looking pretty good every day is a reasonable expectation. Life has been so much easier since I found a curly hair routine that works for me. Now I have switched out products, but it's the routine that really has simplified my life. And here's what I do basically. I wash my hair maybe once or twice a week max. I use leave-in conditioner. And I do this every day, by the way. I then use a defrizzer and I'm using Curl Keeper. I then plop, I get out of the shower and use a gel. I put some clips in my hair, four or five clips. I then twist certain sections, maybe two or three strategically placed twists. I then diffuse my hair till it's about 80% dry, let the rest air dry, and that's it. I'm open to trying new techniques. In fact, I'm about to try a new product line that demands a different strategy, but having a basic approach is making life a lot easier. You'll notice that I didn't say that I have a way of refreshing my hair. That's because until very recently, I didn't. I had to wet my hair every single day. I recently tried a new way of refreshing my hair, which kind of worked. I'm excited about that. So I've tried it once. The second time it didn't work as well. So I'm experimenting with it. And if it really does work, I'll be doing a video on it very soon. So look out for that. One thing I've learned at this age is the importance of getting support. It's pretty hard to get support about curly hair because I don't know that many people who have curly hair, especially like mine. One thing I have found this year is a really amazing Facebook group. Um, it was started by Janelle O'Shaughnessy Ingalls and it's called Wavy, Curly and Coily Connect. Once you're accepted into the group, you'll find an enormous amount of acceptance, support, and love, <laughs> really, and help. If you need help on any issues, there are going to be people on this Facebook group who can help you um, no matter what the issue is. Since the theme for this video is turning 64, let me switch to another topic, and that is accepting my age. Okay, this one's a little tougher. I have gotten used to looking young-ish, and I have noticed a big difference over the last year or two. Lines, lines. Okay, I've noticed a lot more lines. I'm gonna point them out. This is really brave of me, I think. Here, smile lines, marionette lines. 
You may not see them as strongly because the camera doesn't really emphasize them, but they're there. And also, since I'm still coloring my hair, I'm noticing that I have to do it a lot more frequently, which means a lot more money. And okay, so what do you do about that? No judgment, people. What about Botox? Uh, I've never done Botox, I've never done fillers, and I'm not judging anybody who's done. Well, actually, that's not completely true. I tried Botox a couple of years ago for migraines, and it did not work for me, so I discontinued. Um, I don't think it would have done anything for appearance anyway. The strange places they did the Botox, like behind my ears, would not have done anything for my face anyway. Considering, this is going to be really controversial, um, considering maybe doing fillers, I haven't looked into it seriously at all. I haven't even talked to a doctor about it. I don't know uh, whether to do this or not, whether it's right for me or not, whether to age gracefully, uh, I should say gracefully, or 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 try to fight mother nature. I don't know. This is something that I'm I'm really battling with and uh, that's about as honest as, as I can get about this issue. In any case, aging does not mean complacency. I'm grateful for the fact that I have always used, not always, not like my entire life, but since the age of 25, I've used sunscreen in my moisturizer. But over the last year, two years, I've really stepped up the, the skincare regime. And I've been using some pretty serious stuff. For example, I'm using tretinoin, which is the active ingredient in Retin-A. I've been using uh, moisturizer with ceramides. I've been using vitamin C. Um, I've been using coenzyme Q10 and some other ingredients. Uh, this sounds like, wow, it's a lot and it's really expensive. But you know what? I've researched it to the point that I, I find the products that are really effective for the lowest cost. So it's not that expensive. For example, the moisturizer that I use that has ceramides is CeraVe, and you can get it for less than $15, and it's really one of the best moisturizers around. And the coenzyme you can get on Amazon for less than $20, and it lasts you three months. So you can get really good products and not spend a fortune and feel good about your skincare regime. If you're interested in knowing what I do, how I do it, and why I do it, please put a note in the comments and I'd be glad to do a video on that topic. Taking risks. So we are at a time in our lives where we can take some more risks. We don't have little ones at home. We might be retired or we just may have some more time in general. I'm not saying buy a boat, sail across the Atlantic, um, move to Italy for a year, because that takes all sorts of resources that we may or may not have. But do something that stretches you a little bit, like go to a movie during the day by yourself or have a meal at a restaurant by yourself. That's a little bit risky. Or go visit a friend that you haven't seen for a while. Or uh, pursue a hobby. Uh, for example, I went to two knitting camps this year. Well, camps were just weekends, really. So do something that's that you want to do for yourself that you haven't had a chance to do. Learn a new skill, buy a bright pop lipstick, try a new curly hair product, do something different. Uh, the, the greatest risk that I took this year was starting this YouTube channel. Putting myself out there, wow, that was really, really hard. Even harder than learning all the skills that I needed to edit and film and do lighting. 
that was really hard too. And that was really a risk. But as I said, putting myself out there, that was the biggest risk of all. Would anybody watch at all? At 64, I'm well aware of the ups and downs of life. In fact, uh, one of my favorite quotes is, nobody gets through life unscathed. Now that may sound pretty pessimistic, but in a way, I think it makes you pretty empathetic to other people and their then their life struggles and everybody has struggles and of course I do too but that even makes you more sensitive to what you should be grateful for in your own life and there's plenty of things that I'm grateful for I'm grateful for my relationship with my husband um, this year it's going to be 40 years that I'm married I'm grateful for the relationship I have with my adult children. I'm grateful that there's a new medication for migraines that make my life a lot easier. And I'm really grateful, and this sounds a little corny, but I'm grateful for every view that I've received on this YouTube channel and for every person who subscribed to this channel. I have over a hundred subscribers at this point and maybe that's kind of small in the YouTube world but for me that is just amazing so talk about grateful I'm extremely grateful let me know where you are in this stage of life how are you doing with curly hair acceptance how are you doing with aging acceptance what are you grateful for Here's a plea for comments. I haven't gotten a lot of comments and I really need to hear from you. Would you like to know about my skincare routine? Would you like to know about my makeup routine? Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.